is younger than me. Same. <laughs> channel this is Bwandunji she's my little sister and I'm so proud of her <laughs> hi everyone my sister is visiting my sister is part of my inspiration and in doing big gigantic things because she has been doing amazing things for years with social justice and she'll tell us some of that stuff so uh, let's get started Yay! What, what what shall we call you? My name is Jacqueline. My friends call me Jackie. My high school friends call me Jackass. What are you passionate about? Wow. I am passionate mostly about justice. That's a very deep passion for me. Justice broadly, but also specifically justice for women. I desire, I want, I have worked for in my small corner of the world, a fairer world for women. That is my one passion. The others that I've developed along the way are people. I just, I love people. I like to celebrate them. I like to encourage them. I like to nurture people. I like to show people that I really care. One of the life mantras I live by is, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I, I try and live that every single day of my life. And most recently, I love adventure. I love to travel. I love to try new and wild things. And hopefully while I'm here visiting Gloria, we will go to fly. I, mean, <laughs> I really there wanted will be to no skydive. We shall do footage so On that the you can watch Gloria not doing it right. <laughs> that is one of the other inspiring things about her is that my sister does not do this age thing. Like, oh, so I'm this many years old and therefore I cannot do a particular thing like she's always doing something new and exciting and it's so inspiring it's part of living your best life but this is not the oprah show so. <laughs> and i don't have oprah things to give away i left them in uganda <laughs> <laughs> what is your earliest memory of being part of our family i don't have an earliest memory i have an earliest story being told about me two stories actually i understand that there's a point in time when my our mother was in the village in Kambuga and my dad and I drove to go visit and then pick her up and along the way he got an accident uh, the car overturned I you know I don't know what happened but it overturned and they said when we got to the village I told everybody and their grandmother daddy at Terahasi <laughs> which means Daddy made us fall down. He made us flip in the car and I was I was so animated about it. I, I maybe I should have been a reporter. <laughs> in my other life I will be. Uh, but that you know, everybody said I was just a you know, this this person that couldn't keep quiet and I told everybody Daddy at Terahas. The other one was that I love to sing and there was this particular song, Mistress Jacqueline. Mistress Jackie She's a good girl, oh, Jackie Anyhow, uh, for those who don't understand, it just, you know, teacher Jackie. Uh, in, in um, you know, British culture, a teacher was known as a mistress, so Mistress Jacqueline. And anyhow, the song t talks about how I really love teaching and I, I teach well and all around me are happy because I teach well. And, and yes, it was, you know, I loved to perform. At some point in time, I actually thought I was made for Hollywood. She Hollywood was, wasn't just made was, for me yeah. <laughs> in my next life, in my Wakanda life that's coming. Um, but yeah, those are the two things that I was just a chatterbox and I loved to sing and especially to sing about how I was a great teacher. Fast forward, you know, many years later, I was glad that part of my justice work was actually teaching women their rights, their rights in marriage, their rights when they are widows, their rights um, when they are employed. They're right. It's it's my and I love it. It brings me such satisfaction to teach people to open their eyes and and have that moment where it clicks. Oh, this is what I'm entitled to. This is how I can pursue justice in my situation or in a friend's situation. It always I love that. What about it brings you so much happiness? It brings me happiness because we live in Uganda in a situation where there's so much illiteracy people don't know how to read and write and therefore don't usually interact with the law which is one but i've also discovered once i was finished my law school 
there is also very high legal illiteracy. Mm. People do not know mm -hmm. the first thing about their rights. And so they land themselves in situations that they could have avoided mm -hmm. if they knew exactly what the law said. Mm -hmm. And so that is why it's my passion to open people's eyes to the reality of things mm. they could have avoided or can avoid if they also pass on what they've learned. You studied law at Macquarie University, mm -hmm. but you chose not to be an attorney. Mm -hmm. Why? I didn't feel that was my calling. And what I mean by that, when I was in my senior sixth vacation, the vacation that we have after our A-levels, I remember that in between housework, I sat outside a kitchen door on a three-legged stool, and I had my Bible in front of me, and I really, really was praying to God to show me what He wanted me to do with my life. And as I prayed and opened my Bible, I was taken to a verse, and I should have read it before coming here that says be a voice in brief that's what the, the verse says be a voice for the fatherless for the widow for the alien speak up against oppression mm, mm. and I in that moment felt this is my life mission this is exactly why I'm here on earth so that was one moment the second moment came when I was in my first year of law school I was attending the annual law student conference and during that conference, one of the speakers that came was a lady called Mrs. Sarah Bagalariwo. She was then chairperson of FIDA. FIDA is an association of women lawyers, and they do pro bono legal services for poor women. And when she explained what FIDA does, and coming from the background of Be A Voice, Speak Out For, it, it just clicked. And I told myself, this is what I want to do with my life, with my law degree, is to help speak out i.e. so do the advocacy I've done with her, especially legal advocacy to ensure that the laws that we have on our books are supportive of the full dignity and humanity of women. But also then I went to work at FIDA because I didn't want to be the hotshot lawyer that makes a lot of money mm. when I know that the vast majority of women can't afford a lawyer. I wanted to be able to serve that vast majority for them to walk into our chamber at FIDA and, and for me to dispense uh, the advice I could give. I think also it comes from, we are, you know, our father is a, an Anglican priest, was. He modeled service for us. And so I think I grew up with the sense of, therefore, that's what I'm supposed to do. He modeled service, I am to serve. I am not to sit there to be served or to gain and extract. Mine is service. And so that is really the ethos that drives what I do. Thank you.